Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamel. Today we're going to be going over reference designators, how to modify them, how to modify them globally, and then how to add new parts that have a uh, that's that changed footprint. Uh, sorry, that reference designator field size. So let's go over to a design we've been looking at here. This has uh, got a bunch of other stuff on here. We're going to go through and we're going to turn off all the backside stuff. So let's turn off all the backside. We're just going to have the front side turned on here. We'll turn off the backside footprints, and then we're also going to turn off hidden text here, which we may turn back on in a second. Oh, I missed one. Uh, backside silk. There we go. Okay, so mm, backside copper. <laughs> All right. Now we're down to just the front side components. What we want to do is we want to go and change a footprint field size. Not a footprint, sorry, a reference designator field size. Uh, first thing, so let's go and select one of the reference designators. You can also see I had a reference designator. I must have left this on here when I made this board. So you can see I can actually click and drag this up. And you see there's actually a blue line. It's really hard to see. But there's a blue line that shows which component is actually associated with. This is problematic because it's very simple to then, if I selected the R501 and then I, the C501, and I just happened to, to move these like this, it's, it doesn't look off, right? It, I mean, obviously, the, they are wrong. But you know, it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is a resistor and this is a capacitor. So you do want to be careful about that, because then when you go and you're troubleshooting later on and you have a marking on your board, you might trust that more than an assembly drawing that you have otherwise. And so that can, that can be problematic, and this is why reference designators are important in the first place. So first things first, if we want to take this to the hidden layer, we can just select it, mouse over, hit E, and then uh, hit invisible, and now it's gone. OK, now how do we get it back? Well, we have to turn that, that hidden layer back on. And you see it's a slightly different color of gray. And then again, we mouse over, hit E, turn it visible again. I'm going to keep the, uh, I'm going to keep the hidden text off just because it's kind of busy otherwise. And OK, so now we want to change the size of this thing. So maybe, you know, usually the size of the, the reference designators is important as you get more and more uh, complex boards. Things get squeezed in tighter and tighter. And so you might want to change the, this individual size. You can do that by mousing over, hitting E, and then just changing the height and the thickness. And now it's smaller. OK, so it's a little bit smaller than the other ones. If we want to do that for everything, we can go into here, set footprint field sizes, select reference designator and value, and then change this. And everything that is set at that, at, uh, as a reference designator, now everything is a little bit smaller. You notice some of these things have not actually changed size. And that's because this, 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 and this, these are all actually text elements, which is what added by the text on the cop copper or silk screen layer. And that, so this was added after the fact as just a marking to make it a little bit easier to read and interact with. And so uh, you, we could change this one individually, but it will not use that same dialog that we showed before. We're going to do that as well. OK, so now what if we want to add a new footprint in that has, uh, what if we want to change everything, every reference designator on the board for going forward? Well, we would do that over here, actually. We would do that under uh, Setup. And this will be changing in KiCad 5.1 but text and drawings, and then we can change it here as the thickness, 0 0.12, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. So now anytime we add a new part, it will, it will match this uh, smaller, smaller reference designator size. Like I said, if you want to bring anything back that might be hidden, we have to first select the, the hidden text layer, and then we can move that back into here. Reference designators are really important for assembly and for uh, troubleshooting specifically. That's something that I use very often. You want to make sure that it's all uh, that you have things in a cogent way as well. Like so, this one's a little bit far away. I want to move this one over. I just moused over, hit M, and is able to drag it here. You can also select it and then drag it around as well. So uh, that's a quick look at reference designators. Like I said, some of this stuff will be changing in KiCad 5.1. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but this is a really important thing. You know, it's kind of the last step that I always get to in making a board, and yet I find that that's where I make a lot of mistakes. Usually, I'm impatient to get a board out. I want to. I want to just you know make something and send it to the board fab. But you know, taking a little bit of time, making sure you have really nicely drawn and placed reference designators can really make for a better board. That's the kind of thing we go over in contextual electronics. Often, we go over you know making sure you have good markings, making sure you have uh, you know silk screen and other custom graphics you might want on your board, and making boards that are generally better electronics. And that's what we're trying to do at contextual electronics. If you want to talk more about the features itself, especially KiCad 5.1 and what's coming there, you can go over to the forum. That's forum.kicad.info, and we'll have more videos here on contextual electronics about footprints and reference designators and everything else making electronics. Thanks for watching.